Welcome here to race number 16 of season 9 of the NSRA Snickers Cup Series. We are here today at Armory Digital Super Speedway for what's going to be absolutely incredible racing. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with this particular track, well, let me refresh your memory. This track is what we ended up using last season for our season finales in Last of Us Light Series, Oreo Truck Series, Mobile One Cup Series, and Snickers Cup Series, and it brought about unbelievable racing. Now we are going to be here setting up the chase for the chase for the championship here in the Snickers Cup at this particular racetrack. Now this track is a track that these drivers, a number of them, have already been at. So they're going to have a little bit of a road map of what they got to do to win here today. But we're going to have three division races on tap for you, 20 laps apiece. And as I said, it's the chase for the chase. Someone could lock themselves up a confirmed spot in this season's chase for the championship with a win here tonight. On the pole, a driver that actually could be one of those drivers to lock themselves up a chase spot, rookie Ty Dent, who actually, at this very track one year ago, won the Last of Us Light Series Championship. Now, Ty Dent comes in second highest of the drivers in points that have one victory. Right now, if the chase were to start now, he would be seventh in the point standings for the chase standings. But he would love to get a second win, if possible, to confirm that spot in the chase and also get those valuable bonus points that happen once the chase field is reset. Alongside of him is going to be Winston Rivers. He hasn't gone to Victory Lane yet this season. He really could use a trip to Victory Lane to get himself into possible chase contention. Tanner Sullivan will line up in row two. Now, we talked about Trist, uh, Ty Dent. He's got a very good spot in points. Even if he doesn't go to Victory Lane for a second time this season, he's so high up in points, the likelihood of him falling way down out of the one-time winners in the standings is very unlikely. But Tanner Sullivan, on the other hand, he, right now, if the chase were to start, would be 16th the last and final transfer spot into the season's chase for the championship. So a second win would be crucial for that 20 team and definitely a good finish to move himself up maybe higher in the point standings over some other drivers ahead of him in points with one win, such as Nick Pericles, Brandon Gonzalez, and Jeffrey Finguy. So we'll see what's going to happen here in this race. We're going to show you your uh, starting lineup as we did back at uh, Thornton. Look back here through the point standings. There's Dylan Poteet and John Cittadino. Kyle Collins, Tim Walsh, both former winners this season. A second win could confirm them spots in the chase. There's teammates lining up right beside each other there for Team Thunder. William Duncan and Chris Louvier. Ralph Mason had a great run at Open Roads. Not quite as good a run at uh, Thornton, but... Not bad in his first two starts in his return to the Snickers Cup. And then Harrison Langford and Austin Weiner are going to complete the rest of the field. So we will get these cars rolling off now. 20 laps of racing await us. Now, right now we have a total of, I think, five drivers that are at this point confirmed in the chase. Danny Wells, Tristan Wilhoyt, Robert Piette, Chris Kyle, and Sean Henley. Will Hoyt, Piet, Kyle, and Henley have gone to victory lane twice this season. Chris Kyle just recently, two weeks ago, at Open Road. Sean Henley just last week at Thornton. And Danny Wells, of course, with three wins. He was basically confirmed in the chase a number of weeks ago. So it's going to come down right now, basically, between the drivers with one win in this season. If they can get themselves a second win this season, well, then they're locked into the chase as well. So right now, here at the... Uh, race 16 point we got five drivers confirmed in this season's chase for the championship armory is a track that can hold them four wide however this is a track also where you really do need a drafting partner if you are going to try and make a move for a position without any help the likely is likelihood is you're not going to be able to make that move work. And you're going to lose more positions than you planned on gaining. Another thing that I've noticed too is that the outside line here works exceptionally well. If you can get somebody up there with you. 
a lot of times in practice I saw drivers trying to make moves on drivers ahead of them on the low side and without drafting help that outside line gets a nice run especially out of turns two and four and that could be crucial if it comes down to a battle to the stripe down this front straightaway. Rookies going to get ready to get us underway. The Audi of Ty Dent, the Chevy Camaro of Winston Rivers. And we're about to find out if maybe another driver will be confirmed in this season's Snickers Cup Series Chase for the Championship. Green flag is out here at Armory Digital. Man, almost a three-wide drag race to the green flag between Ben Braley, Winston Rivers, and Ty Dent. And here comes Tanner Sullivan to the bottom. Sullivan knows the pressure that's on him right now. His teammate Chris Kyle out of Young Motorsports already confirmed in this season's chase. He'd love to put a second Young Motorsports driver in the chase. But there you see right there. Didn't have the drafting help. And Winston Rivers on the outside line. The help from Ben Braley goes to the point. And look at him back there. Dylan Pote. Whoa! He got turned down the racetrack by Tim Walsh. Nice save by the 31. They are four wide, about two, three rows deep. Five wide now at a point. Ralph Mason making that five wide situation with Pote, Zeke, Marley, and Ty Dent. Winston Rivers right now, the Pied Piper controlling the draft, now works with the middle line of Kyle Collins. Collins now moves up to get some help from Johnny Gardner. And here comes Andreas Allen to the inside with help from Pichu London. line does have some drivers lined up there but now Andreas Allen's going to ditch the move to the middle line and Rivers with the help of Collins is going to get the shove back to the front well not for long though Andreas Allen's still fighting hard on that inside line and I think Andreas may have just cleared him not quite he's almost clear might be able to slide up now no nope. Rivers gets the run back on the high side with help from Collins and Rivers will lead that lap by half a car length Look at here, and none of these drivers up here at the front, with the exception of Kyle Collins, have gone to victory lane yet this season. Three wide for the lead, Johnny Gardner. And look at Ian Siegel, thinking maybe about four wide, but still the outside line working. Kyle Collins, Winston Rivers have a nice alliance going on there. And Rivers is again going to get shoved to the lead. Kyle Collins being helped there by Luigi Victorino and Chris Washer. Dylan Pote now entering back into this fray. The outside line is really getting that run that I talked about. And Winston Rivers is utilizing it to his benefit. Still leading this race. Comes Andreas Allen back to the inside line. Oh, wow, I'm surprised Ben Braley didn't try and stick it in the middle three wide there. Ralph Mason was giving him a real good shove through that corner. But instead, he moves up, and he'll help Winston Rivers on the high side. Again, Winston Rivers recruiting drivers on the outside line to help keep him at the front. And he will do so, and this time, well, I was going to say, Ben Braley was going to move to second as a result. But Kyle Collins dive bombs him to the inside, and he'll take that spot. That 17 has been really strong and really smart on knowing what to do to control the draft to keep himself out in front. And now he's got his usual wingman right behind him again, the 13 of Kyle Collins. But here's Andreas Allen. Big run to the inside this time. Now he's got a slide up in front of Winston Rivers. I think he's got him cleared this time. The inside line actually kicked in here at Armory for a moment. Wait a minute though, outside line's coming back again. Winston Rivers, Kyle Collins, Ben Braley versus Andreas Allen, Ralph Mason, and Luigi Victorino. Mason committed to the game stop. Chevrolet's back bumper right now. Is it going to keep the 77 out in front? At least for now it will. Winston Rivers' company all just left him on the high side. And now Ralph Mason going to try the outside line. got a little bit higher in the corner than they wanted to and also so did uh, Winston Rivers almost got up into the wall did the 17 and Ben Braley now the 
look into the inside, and he'll try and slide up in front of Andreas Allen for the lead, but Andreas Allen's got Ralph Mason helping him now. Mason dives low. Four wide behind him there. Pichu London, Chris Louvier, Dylan Poteen, and Daniel Voiles right down on the double blue line. And now Kyle Collins helping another driver on that outside line. This time, Andreas Allen. And I'll tell you what, if somebody on the final lap could choose somebody to help push him to the win, I think Kyle Collins would be the overall choice. He's pushed Winston Rivers to the lead. He's helped keep Andreas Allen in the lead. That 13 car can push. Ben Braley now looking at the inside line. I'm noticing a driver working his way up here. Notice the blue and gold car in the middle line. That's Steven Gonzalez in the 555. Now, when the Last of Us Light series was here last season, it was Steven Gonzalez who went to victory lane at this track. So keep that in mind. He's now making his presence felt up here in the first division race. Three wide for the lead. Ralph Mason to the inside. Ben Braley in the middle. High side is going to be Andreas Allen. Kyle Collins pushing the middle, Luigi Victorino pushing the outside, which line prevails at the line? It's Andreas Allen by a few inches. Whoa, Matthew Dalio way up the racetrack there, up into, I don't know if, I don't really know if those are rumble strips up there or not, I think they are. I think those rumble strips are up there for a purpose of not allowing the car to ride up into the outside wall. Matthew Dalio was up there on those rumble strips nonetheless. It's a dead heat down this straightaway, but nope, outside line prevails again. Andreas Allen with, guess who? Kyle Collins pushing him, and now Steven Gonzalez going to jump up there to the high side. He's won at this track before. He knows what line moves. Here comes Brandon Gonzalez, who won last week, his first win in a long time in Snickers Cup last week at Thornton. Chris Washer right there as well, Anthony McCrory. Ben Braley going to jump to the inside line. Help from Ralph Mason. Andreas Allen trying to get Kyle Collins back to his back bumper to help keep him out in front. And now Ralph Mason says, there you go, Braley. I pushed you to lead, but now I want it myself. If you're Ralph Mason, you've got nothing to lose. Ralph Mason coming in way down in the point standings due to filling in as a replacement driver midway through the season. So... If he can get to victory lane, more power to him. If he can get to victory lane twice, we don't have that top 20 rule, especially since we have about 126 drivers. They were four wide, five wide for the lead. Chris Washer to the front. And like I was saying, if Ralph Mason can go to victory lane twice this season, then, whoa, there's a wreck. Jack Kearney got turned into the wall. That'll be a caution at the midway point. And if I can finish my statement, Ralph Mason, if he can win two races this season, regardless of where he is in points and regardless of the number of starts he made, he would be in the chase for the championship. So that 91 car is going to go all out for these next few races. And he's trying to take the lead away from Chris Washer, and he'll do so. Ralph Mason, big run, is going to go to the front. Brandon Gonzalez trying to take second now away from Chris Washer. As they're coming to receive the yellow flag at the line, I think it'll be Ralph Mason leading by about half a car length over Brandon Gonzalez's 23. Let's see who was involved in that incident. William Duncan, Michael Norman way back here. Don't know if they were involved. There's Noah Hart, Winston Rivers who was out in front for a good portion of this race. Daniel Day, badly mangled on the Shell Pennzoil Chevrolet. Jack Kearney, that was the car I saw shoot up the track. He's on pit road. Harrison Langford is there, Charles Jackson, Luis Hernandez, Riley Anderson. I keep calling it Daniel Voiles. Oh, and Steven Gonzalez. Man, he was one of the favorites, I thought, coming into this race. James McLeod is also on the pit road. And John Cittadino. Tanner Sullivan, who came in in that critical 16th spot in points. And Chris Louvier is also damaged. Chris Louvier, the highest running of the drivers with one win in the standings here this season, and he is involved. 
boy. This wreck played no favorites for sure. Ralph Mason is the leader under our first caution, a number of drivers that are were hoping for this race to be a race that they could use to confirm themselves a spot in the chase. Well, doesn't look like that's the case at the moment. A number of them caught up in this first wreck of the evening. Let's take a look at a replay. But well, we actually had two separate incidents take place. Now watch the inside line. The 73 of Corey Williams, the 15 of Tim Walsh, the 67 of Alan Cavanaro. Now I'm not exactly sure why they made this particular entry into the corner. But all three of them go down and get the apron there. And it's going to shoot Tim Walsh right up the track into Jack Kearney and Cavanaro up the track into James McLeod and Riley Anderson. There's Louvier nowhere to go. Ben Braley. Winston Rivers got hit from behind. There's Steven Gonzalez got squeezed up into the wall. And there comes another shot from the 26 of Riley Anderson. Dylan Pochte just barely gets through. And then Riley's going to spin right down in front of John Cittadino and Daniel Day. There's Tanner Sullivan. Noah Hart involved. McCrory back there got into McLeod. William Duncan back behind this. One car up and over. That's Luis Hernandez. Gene Sanford was in it. Joshua Balkowitz got a piece of this as well as Michael Norman. Nick Alton as well in the 90. I'm not. I'm still kind of questioning that whole entry into the corner. There's Charles Jackson also involved. Let's look here from the McLeod machine. Just watch that 67. 67 and the 15 especially. Both really got down the apron. And when they got back up the racetrack, just slid them both right up the hill. There's McLeod. Nothing he could do. Riley Anderson, nowhere to go. Chris Louvier, Ben Braley's on the extreme high line. Where is he going to go? Winston Rivers turns around in front of McCrory. Sullivan, I think, got tapped from behind by Cittadino. McCrory gets sideswiped by Noah Hart. And then McCrory gets into McLeod and Charles Jackson. I thought he might get clipped by Winston Rivers, but actually Jackson... Oh, yep, there's the hit from Winston. And then he just turns down onto the apron. I think, I think Charles Jackson might have gotten stuck on the apron portion of the racetrack. These five cars here, and then there's about maybe another ten cars up here. And there's Luis. Man, the car's flipping and barrel rolling. Finally, we'll come to rest on all four wheels. That's what put us under the caution. The big one has struck here at Armory. Cars in the back straightaway. We'll get ready to go back to green flag race in a lap 15 of 26 laps to go when the green comes back out. Top ten. Ralph Mason's the leader. Brandon Gonzalez trying to go to victory lane in back-to-back -back weeks. Austin Talley is in third, Chris Washer fourth, Luigi Victorino is in fifth, sixth Kyle Collins, Andreas Salen seventh, Johnny Gardner eighth, Corey Williams is in ninth, and tenth place is Ian Siegel. Drivers out of the race for the incidents we just saw take place. I believe Charles Jackson and Harrison Langford are still on the racetrack, but they were a lap down. Both got caught in the apron from that incident. Riley Anderson's questionable. We'll check that in a minute. It looks like John Cittadino, Chris Louvier, Jack Kearney, Winston Rivers, Steven Gonzalez, as well as James McLeod, Tanner Sullivan, Daniel Day, and Luis Hernandez are all out of the race. Nope, Cittadino still running. Two laps down. Riley Anderson, Harrison Langford, and Charles Jackson are all one lap down. So that's the drivers that are running. Everybody else that I mentioned that is not on track are out of the race. So here we go, getting ready to go back to green. Ralph Mason will lead us back to the green flag here, trying to win what would actually be the first victory of the season for Coyote Tech Racing. Both his teammates, McCurry and Prohibit Arvin, have not yet gone to victory lane this season. Brandon Gonzalez, well, he took a peek, not going to quite make the move, is now... Austin Talley is to his inside, and Brandon Gonzalez is a teammate up here in Luigi Victorino that he might be able to work with. Teammates also working on the inside line, and Reyes Allen has found teammate Corey Williams. Austin Talley going to try and get a run to the inside line. Everybody who's coming to this front of the field now. It's pressure time. Austin Talley, I believe, going to take the lead here, at least for the moment. And he'll lead that lap, but here's Corey Williams looking to the inside there. Four wide again.
Williams looking for some drafting help, not finding it yet. Now Matthew Dalio is going to tuck in line with him. And look here, Kyle Collins. Who's he going to push? Oh, he doesn't want to push anybody. He wants to go to the lead himself, going up the middle line. Corey Williams there along with Matthew Dalio. Which line's going to go? Ralph Mason's helping Kyle Collins in the middle. Andreas Allen helping Austin Talley on the outside. Kyle Collins wants to go to victory lane himself. He's had enough of pushing other drivers to the lead. When they hit the strike, four to go here at Armory. Caution flag, I think, would end the race, too. So keep that in mind as Collins will lead that lap. I forgot to bring up the ticker. I do apologize. Whoa, Austin Talley up the racetrack into the wall. Almost got turned off the nose of Kyle Miller. Hangs on to her, though. We're still green. And Ralph Mason now to the point. How to be for Ralph Mason in his third start back to go to victory lane in the Snickers Cup Series. In a Pontiac, no less. Andreas Allen right there, though. Looking to the inside. Look at this. Wow. Right up against his left rear. That's a dangerous thing to do at a restrictor plate track. And now Chris Washer comes to the inside line in the 35. Trying to pick up the second win of the season for RGE BMW Racing. His teammate Joshua Michaels has already been to victory lane. And now here comes Kyle Collins back to the inside again. Help from Luigi Victorino. Now Luigi Victorino going to go three wide to the inside. Where's the drafting help going to be? Kyle Miller helping Kyle Collins. Ralph Mason helping Chris Washer. And Washer's going to move to the front. Three wide behind him. Four wide a little bit further back. Almost five wide there with Fitzwater, Austin Talley, and Luigi Victorino. Washer leading the way, two to go here in Division One at Armory. And Chris Washer wash the dishes at Armory Super Speedway. Kyle Miller right behind him though, looking to pick up the 7-10 split. I know the GoBowling.com pun was terrible, but I don't care. Kyle Miller looking for the top position now. His teammate Tanner Sullivan was up here at the front earlier. Now is another chance for a young motorsports driver to go to victory lane. Kyle Collins still in the mix though, so is Ralph Mason, and so is last week's winner, Brandon Gonzalez. Kind of spread out here at the front. What was three and four wide racing a couple laps ago is now only about double wide formation in a couple of portions of the top 10. White flag displayed, one more to go. Chris Washer the leader, Kyle Miller. Kyle Collins, then Johnny Gardner moves to fourth past Ralph Mason. You got RGE BMW Motorsports. You've got Michael Norman Motorsports, Young Motorsports, and Sega Motorsports all up here at the front. Add in Citadino Ed Motorsports with the 73 of Corey Williams. Gonzalez Motorsports with the 23 of Brandon Gonzalez, and Kyotech Racing with the Pontiac of Ralph Mason. Which one of these guys gonna go victory lane? They're almost four wide for fourth place between Gonzalez, Mason, Gardner, and Williams. They are four wide. Kyle Collins, Kyle Miller, will they be able to get any kind of a run here on Chris Washer coming to the line? Doesn't look like it. Chris Washer's gonna hang on and capture his first win of the season here at Armory Digital Super Speedway. Last win for Chris Washer came at Thornton last season in season eight when he drove the number 10. This season though, Chris Washer in his debut season for RGE BMW Racing will pick up the victory here at Armory. What a win for Chris Washer. And I don't know where he rightly is in the point stands, but now is the question is Chris Washer throwing his name into the hat for a potential spot in this season's Snickers Cup Series chase for the championship? Second place was Kyle Miller. Kyle Collins in third. Brandon Gonzalez going to get fourth. And Ralph Mason finishes in fifth. Tally Gardner, Andreas Allen. How about Zachary Fitzwater? Really didn't talk about him. He'll finish ninth. And Corey Williams 
finishes in 10th. So Chris Washer wins the first division race here today, or tonight I should say, at Armory Digital Super Speedway. Who is next? Divisions two and three coming up next. Let's take and show you your full finish results here from the first division races. I believe Chris Washer may have just ran out of fuel. I think that car just stopped. So we get now ready for Division 2 racing here tonight at Armory on the pole position. A guy that actually hasn't been to Victor Lane since Trace Rivera's last season. Jacob Lawler, former Sprint Cup Series, or Snickers Cup Series champion, I should say. But anyway, he has not gone to Victory Lane yet this season. And that, that win is absolutely necessary for him to be able to get himself even into contention for a spot in this season's chase. He'll start off alongside of rookie Matt McIntyre. Matt McIntyre, of course, won earlier on this season at Talladega Super Speedway, so a second win here tonight at Armory. That would probably lock him a spot up in this season's chase for the championship. And then you got two teammates lining up in the next row. Joshua Michaels, another driver, former winner this season, won back at, I believe it was Atlanta. And he's looking for his second win of the season, which would lock him into the chase. And alongside of him, Christopher Pierce, who's still looking for his first win of the season, as we're going to do... Uh, like I've been doing the past couple of weeks. We're going to show you starting lineup this way. Carter Fargo, another driver who's been to victory lane. A second win, we get him into the uh, chase. So we look further back here. There is Momo Akari, our winner from uh, Open Roads, starting back here. Looking for her second win. There's Danny Wells, three-time winner. Still looking for that fourth win. A lot of people wondering if he can do it before the uh, regular season is over. And we go all the way to the back here, Jessica Villanueva and Ian Dutta are going to complete the rest of the field as we got the command to fire the engines, and we're going to get them rolling off here for 20 laps of racing in this run. Now, if we're able to base off of the uh, Division One race, I think we can uh, safely say that it looks like the outside line is a lot easier for drivers to make passes with than the inside line and probably a big portion of that is because the way that this track is built especially with the entry into the corner is you do have to let out of the throttle a little bit when you're in the inside line outside line you might actually be able to run full throttle and not even have to worry about letting out of the gas so that could be a big reason why a lot of drivers jump up and work together on the outside portion the outside lanes of this track. We'll see if that may end up being utilized here in this Division 2 race as well. Because it apparently really seemed to be the line to work in the Division 1 race. We saw a number of drivers utilizing it. Kyle Collins, Andreas Allen, they were up there pretty much this whole, or the whole entire first race. So we'll see what happens in this case here. Whether drivers going to be a little bit more daring, try and get something happening on the inside line, or if they're all going to try and fight for the outside line, which for some reason appears to be the faster way around this particular racetrack. Danny Wells and Robert Piet both went to victory lane three and two times respectively this season earlier on. They haven't really been up at the front of the field the last couple of weeks after the All-Star race break. So it'll be interesting to see what they'll do here at a restricted plate track at Armory. Will we see them up at the front as Danny's looking for his fourth win of the season? Robert Piet looking for his third. Now both of them are locked into the chase for the championship, but they would love to be able to have that extra five points for bonus once the chase begins. Here we go. Green flags out here in Division 2 at Armory. They're already three wide at the start as Christopher Pierce jumped up all the way to the high side. And Jacob Lawler, because Matt McIntyre had no drafting help, he'll go to the lead. Joshua Michaels now to the inside, and he's going to easily take the top position away. Now, remember, his teammate Chris Washer won the first division race. So BMW's got a little bit of one edge on the rest of the drivers. I'm certain that Chris Washer gave a little bit of insight to his teammate Joshua Michaels and Ian Dutta in this race as to how to be in the right place at the right time. Get yourself to the lead. And now Carter Fargo to the front. I mentioned Carter Fargo, a former winner this season. Ended up going to victory lane back at Infineon. And right now he's 
en route to if he could pick up a second win, he would put Buick Regal in the chase for the first ever time as now Dougie Shears will go to the bottom and will go to the front. The single car race team of Schwab Racing, a driver who drove for Michael Norman Motorsports last season, was actually the only one for Michael Norman Motorsports last season who did not go to victory lane. He was close so many times. As a matter of fact, I remember one race last season, I believe it was at Rockingham, North Carolina, where he was dominating that race, and he ended up getting turned by a lap machine. He saved it, but he did not win the race, so he's looking for redemption this season. It's been a long time since Dougie Shears has been to Victory Lane, the Snickers Cup Series event. Cold Alley gonna jump to the inside line now as he'll look for the top position off of Dougie Shears. Dally has not been to Victory Lane since the first Thornton race of season eight. Been a long time since that 88's been in Victory Lane. Bob Jones lined up right behind him. Bob Jones was, oh wait, are they decreasing? They're decreasing their speed, must be under caution. But real quickly, I was gonna say, Bob Jones had the momentum of winning the All-Star race a couple of weeks ago. He's up there in third, but yeah, the yellow flag is out, and that looked like that could have been Jeffrey Finn guy's car on the apron. That was. He might have been the reason the caution came out. Let's see if anybody else was in trouble. Jay Kane's coming up here. Oh, wow, there's a lot of cars on pit road. Jessica Villanueva, Isaac Canepa, Lisa Gonzalez, Kyle Corbett, Clint Spillman, Kyle Matthews, Benjamin Miles, PJ Williams, Zach Rogers, Ryan Shelton. There's Lyndon Wright way back. Looks like maybe some left side damage on his Dragon Fire Ford. And oh, Ian Dutta also involved. A lot of damage on the Hunt Brothers. Pizza BMW, his teammate Christopher Pierce also damaged on his machine. Bella Davis has damage. Eric Powers, Theo Stegall's coming to pit road. Nick Pericles got right side damage. James Shelley, some damage on the front of his Florida Gators Chevrolet. Jonathan Zorling's coming to pit road as well. And I think that's Henry Cavan on the 136 also hitting the pit lane. So we must have had some kind of a doozy of a wreck or something. There are a lot of damaged machines. As Dougie Shears is the leader under the first yellow of the evening. Let's take a look at a replay of what happened. Well, here's where the initial contact's going to begin. It starts with Christopher Pierce and Ryan Shelton, I believe. Right there, Matt McIntyre gets into the wall ahead of Christopher Pierce. Pierce, I don't know if he slammed in the brakes or what, but made some contact, then comes down the racetrack into Ryan Shelton. Look at Zach Rogers all the way down to the bottom. Nowhere for him to go. Danny Wells going to get a piece of it there as he slides up into Benjamin Miles, Theo Stegall, James Shelley. Right there is where Jeffrey Finguy gets clipped up high. There you see Shelley makes contact with Pericles. Zach Krastowski got a piece of it. Bella Davis, Eric Powers. Oh, man, Kyle Matthews up and on his side. That's like the, third, the second time in four weeks he's been upside down all-star race he was flipping as well. Dylan Young gets into Benjamin Miles. There's Villanueva, Canepa, Corbett, TJ Williams, Dutta, Gonzalez, Rogers, Spillman, Brandon Crasta, Lyndon Wright. You just see it. Everybody just all slides down the racetrack there. There's just nowhere to go. It's like a big sweeping hand collecting all these drivers. And Benjamin Miles' car comes to rest on its roof. And Kyle Matthews up on his side, leaning against the Ryan Shelton machine. So that is what puts under the caution. The big one strikes early here in the Division Two race at Armory. Lights are out atop of the pace car. We'll go back to green flag racing. It will be on lap number 7 of 20, which will give us 14 to go here in the second division race. Now, there are five cars on the inside line one lap down. Those drivers are drivers that were involved in the incident, but were able to continue, but they were caught down on the apron, like we saw when the cars all slid down. They were stuck on the apron, they had to teleport to pit road, and thus they are restarting off the lead lap. Just Gabriel Nueva, Isaac Kanep, PJ Williams, Clint Spillman, and Zach Rogers are those drivers. Dougie Shears will restart as the leader, Cole Daly second, Bob Jones in third, Carter Fargo fourth, Nathan Ormond is fifth, Liam Irving is in sixth, seventh Joshua Michaels, Momo Kari runs in eighth, ninth place is Webster Zygarde, and in tenth place will be Eric Burton, then it's Brad Mojo, Robert Piet, Nilo Belvin, 
Then Jacob Lawler, the pole sitter, Matt McIntyre, Zach Brasowski, Danny Wells, Mason Powers, James Shelley, and Theo Stigall. That's the top 20. And the rest of the drivers on the lead lap are Jonathan Zorling, Lyndon Wright, Nick Pericles, and Henry Cavanaugh back through 24th. The rest of the drivers are out of the race that are not on the inside line one lap down, which means out of the original 42 cars, only 29 are still running. And 24 on the lead lap as the green flag is back out. Drivers out of the race after what we saw are the following. Eric Powers, Christopher Pierce, Bella Davis, Ian Dutta, Ryan Shelton, Benjamin Miles, Jeffrey Finn Guy, Brandon Krasta, Kyle Matthews, Jake Haynes, Kyle Corbett, Dylan Young, and Lisa Gonzalez. Now out of the drivers that came into this race, currently listed if the chase were to start now in the chase for the championship, one of them is Jeffrey Finguy, and so this is not good for him, as he could very well fall out of the chase leaving today, and then have to try and regroup in the next few weeks at Watkins Glen in Arizona, and a couple other tracks that we're going to. Bob Jones trying to fight with Dougie Shears for the top position. Not going to be able to do it. Carter Fargo, really, I, I think he got tight there in front of the middle line. He had to bail out of the throttle pretty quickly. Old Alley working on the high side there with Dougie Shears. We saw this in the first division race, too. Driver more willing to help the driver on the outside rather than the inside line. Now Bob Jones will slip back to the third position. They're four wide further back. Now settling it out to three wide. Momokari making some moves back there, and so too is Brad Mojo in the National Hockey League forward. Top two, Dougie Shears, Cole Daly. Shears the season one Snickers Cup Series champion, Cole Daly, who was a chaser last season. And there's Bob Jones, former Sprint Cup Series All-Star, or Sprint Cup Series, why do I keep calling it? Sprint Unlimited winner and a former All-Star Race winner from this season. He won the Sprint Unlimited back in Season 8. Clint Spellman on the inside there. Clint actually was a big contender for the win in Division 2 a couple of weeks ago at Champs-Élysées. Oh, wait, no. I just confused myself. Never mind. what I was thinking of. So they got Thornton. Thornton, I think it was. Yeah, Thornton, he was a contender. We're not even at Shuns. What am I even thinking of? We haven't gone there yet. Getting my races all mixed up here. Kind of basically because Mobile Cup Series and Snickers Cup Series have been going to different venues during the course of their chase to the chase. And so I'm getting these different tracks all mixed up. Old Alley going to try the inside line, and he actually has some drafting partner there in Bob Jones. And they work by Dougie Shears. Well, Bob wants to go to the inside. Look what he's got behind him. His teammate, Momo Kari, has now found him. And Momo Kari went to victory lane a couple weeks ago at open roads already. Second win would get her into the chase for the championship, but Bob Jones wants to get himself in contention for the chase as well. So if it comes down to pushing a teammate, would that happen between the 14 and the 47 is now Cold Alley under fire from Momo Kari. He's now got some help from Carter Fargo, who's been able to regroup, make his way back up here to the front. Saw him have a little bit of trouble in the middle line earlier on. Dropped back a bit. Now he's back up here, helping trying to push Momo to the lead. But Cold Alley's got Dougie Shears and Clint Spillman lined up with him on the outside line. But Momo, I think, just might have cleared him in that middle groove. Slide up in front of him. Daly gonna battle back on the high side. Momo left a hole. Daly filled it at the line. That time, I think it was Momo and Kari by a split. And now Dougie Shears goes way up to the high side. Puts Cole Daly in the middle. Daly with help from Bob Jones. Shears up with Spillman, but the inside line prevails at least out of turn number two. Momo Kari to the lead. Carter Fargo gonna clear Cole Daly for second. Now it's Zach Rostowski on the inside line, trying to take third place away, as they are going to be four wide, almost five wide, heading into three. They thought about it. They thought about five wide, and it would have been dangerous for sure. Four wide is a iffy here 
five wide is a definite no. Omokari now with Cole Daly right behind her, and now here comes Bob Jones. Bob Jones wants to be able to get up there, help his teammate. I think he cleared him. I think he cleared Cole Daly. And now he actually gonna go for the lead himself off of Momokari. To our teammates out of JE Racing. Momo's already been to victory lane two weeks ago, as I mentioned, at Open Roads. Bob Jones has yet to go to victory lane in the Super Cup Series event this season. One last season at Darlington. And now look at the inside line. Here comes Zach Krastowski, help from Brad Mojo. And they're going to go four wide for the lead here to the line. Who's it going to be? Looks like it could be Bob Jones by a splitter. It was. Just barely. That was the lower high groove, if you will. There's four different lanes really here. There's the high lane, the lower high lane, the upper low lane, and then the low line. And surprisingly enough, you wouldn't think of this at any track, but the one that's used the less amount of times at this particular track is the low lane, right down there against that double blue line. That's used very rarely. A lot of drivers prefer the upper low line and then the uh, two high lines of this track. But Cole Dowd is going to try and get that inside line going. Help from Dougie Shears, and he actually will get to the line first this lap. How about Robert Piet? There he comes on the inside line, right behind Zach Krastowski. He was just kind of lying in the way. Now he's making his way to the front. Trying to take third place away from Cole Daly now for Piet. He's already locked in for chase. What he wants to do now is pick up a third win, so that way he would be tied with Danny Wells for the number one seed when the chase field is put together. out in front by about a car length now over Zach Krastowski. I don't know how he got so far out ahead, but that's normally not exactly a good thing here at a restricted plate track. But there's five laps to go. It's Shears, Krastowski, Piet, that's the top three. And I believe it was Cole Daly in fourth, and Carter Fargo crossed the line in fifth. Now Dougie Shears, I think he'll try and do what we saw Chris Washer do in the first division race. Now that he's got this bit of an advantage, he can control the draft. He can decide who's going to start moving, which line's going to come get the momentum, and which line won't. And he can determine that, you know, basically on the back of front straightaway. Is that Krastowski? Oh, pit stops. Krastowski and Piet hitting the pit lane. Now, we didn't see pit stops take place in the Division One race, but apparently they're having to pit here in Division Two. Now Shears, Daly, and Momo Akari, that is the top three, as Piet and Zach Krastowski both came to pit lane. Lyndon Wright is in, so is Danny Wells. Mason Powers is in as well. I believe those, oh, Jacob Lawler and Nick Pericles also on pit road. And now here come the slower machines of Henry Cavanaugh and Theo Stagall. They're coming in to make pit stops as well. This is going to kind of break the field up late in this race. It now looks like here come the rest of the leaders. Dougie Shears, along with Cole Daly and Momo Akari. One driver stayed out. Burton is in. Bob Jones, Brad Mojo, Liam Irving, Carter Fargo, Nilo Balvin. But someone stayed out. And that was Nathan Ormond in the 124. He'll stay out an extra lap. And this is going to be... Three to go. It was three to go when Orman hit the line. Now he'll undoubtedly probably have to come to pit road, I would think, this time. I don't see how he could possibly make it another two laps if everybody else that's on the lead lap had to come to pit road. And now it's like he's indicating he's going to be coming to the pit lane, and indeed he will. Lap car of Isaac Canepa also coming. Clint Spillman was a lap machine. That's why he stayed out. He's already been to pit road, I believe. Canepa pulls into his pit stall. So now comes the question, how fast can this McDonald's Chevrolet team be 
on pit road to try and get Nathan Ormond out ahead of Dougie Shears, Cole Daly, Momo Akari, and all the rest of those guys. It's like they're just going to fill him full of fuel and send him on his way. Ormond coming off the pit lane. Let's see if he can get off pit road ahead of all those other drivers who pitted one lap earlier than he did. Dougie Shears just hit the line. Ormond's got to hurry. There you see Dougie Shears on top of your screen. Here comes Ormond off pit road. Dougie Shears right behind him. Can Ormond have some distance between himself and Shears? He's got a lot of distance between himself and Momo Akari. Here comes Dougie Shears. This is for the lead. Shears around the outside, and he will take the top position as they cycle back around after the pit stops. So now it's Shears and Ormond, and then a ways back to Momo Akari in third. Who's under fire from Eric Burton, actually. That bigger pack is starting to reel in these guys. One more lap to go. Dougie Shears with a huge advantage. Not exactly a good thing, but let's see if he can hang on. Ormond now has caught the draft off the 46. Here he comes trying to catch up. Burton, Momo Akari, Zach Rostowski, they've all caught his draft, and now he may be a sitting duck. As now Clint Spillman comes off of pit road. Hopefully he's not going to get come up in front of anybody. Oh, no, he almost did, but they all were able to get around him. Of Momo Akari to the inside of, of Nathan Ormond. That's for second. And now here she comes to the inside for the top position. Looking for a second win in three weeks. And Momo Akari has got the advantage coming off turn four. But the tracking helps up high. Ormond is helping Dougie Shears. And I think he's gotten around her on the high side. He has. Dougie Shears clears. Here comes Ormond on the high side. And Dougie Shears is just barely able to hang on and picks up his first win of the season here in the Snickers Cup Series at Armory. I thought he was a sitting duck. I thought it was over for the Avenged Sevenfold PewDiePie Chevrolet, but with a little help from Nathan Orman coming out of turn four, Dougie Shears was able to hang on and he will win here tonight at Armory. His first win of the season and first win for Schwab Racing here in season nine. Great win there for Dougie Shears, and it'll be interesting to see where he is in the point standings after this race, whether or not he would be in contention for a potential chase position. Nathan Orman finished in second. Momo Kari will finish third. Fourth was Burton, Brad Mojo in fifth. Krastowski, Robert Piet, Mason Powers. How about that 79? Great run for him tonight. Dan Wells will finish in ninth, and Liam Irvig will finish right behind him in the 10th position the top nine all finished within half a second of each other and then 10th place was almost five seconds back so those pit stops really split the field up but Dougie Shears will win here tonight so we've had two first time winners at least for this season go to victory lane tonight Chris Washer and Dougie Shears let's see who's going to win division three now as we'll show you your full finish results from this division race and now get ready for division three So as we prepare ourselves for Division 3, a couple of former winners this season will start on the front row. Alex Hawkins, who won earlier on this season at Phoenix, trying to pick up his second win of the season, which would lock him up a chase spot. And right now, alongside of him, Chris Kyle is one of those five confirmed drivers in this season's chase, as he's been to victory lane twice this season, winning at Talladega, and then winning a couple of weeks ago at Open Roads. So... Chris Kyle, right now, what he's basically going to try and do is the same thing we were talking about Robert Piet trying to do in the Division 2 race. Is he's going to try and go to victory lane for a third time this season and tie Danny Wells for the number one seed once the Chade field is all put together. But we're going to show you uh, your lineup for the Division 3 race. There's Sean Henley, another two-time winner who is already locked into this season's chase for the championship he's looking for his third win here tonight Levi McIntyre defending Daytona 500 winner this kind of a track would be right up his alley as he would try and look for his second win of the season there's Tristan Wilhoyt who is the other confirmed driver in the chase two-time winner look for his third win of the season as well and then it's Deion Scott and Jerry Guerra 
who will round out the field. Let's get these cars rolling. I've kind of been surprised. I thought that a track, especially like this, based on other tracks that we're planning on going to uh, in the, the next couple of weeks, including Champs-Élysées and Watkins Glen and Arizona, that these drivers would uh, more than likely try and fight more to try and pick up a second win, lock themselves up a chase spot. But so far tonight, we've had drivers go to victory lane for the first time this season. Chris Washer in Division 1 and Dougie Shears in Division 2. So, we'll see if a driver will take advantage tonight of Armory. Maybe lock themselves up a chase spot here in Division 3. But, at the moment, it's looking like that might not be the case. Drivers that right now really need to get to victory lane in order to get themselves into contention have been able to do it. Washer and Shear so far. Who will we see here in this Division 3 race? We'll find out at the end of 20 laps. Another thing too, I don't understand it because we had a caution flag in Division 1, but we didn't have pit stops. But we did have a caution flag in Division 2, and there were no pit stops. Or, and, then, and then we had the green flag pit stops. I mean. By that, why the Division 1 drivers were able to make it, but the Division 2 drivers were not. And so you gotta wonder now, is fuel going to be a concern for these Division 3 drivers? We're gonna find out. So coming into tonight's race, Danny Wells, Tristan Wilhite, Robert Piet, Chris Pyle, and Sean Hedges, they are five confirmed drivers that will be in the chase for the championship. It is mathematically and win-wise impossible for them to not be in this season's chase with the number of races that we have left. We have not yet been able to confirm tonight any other drivers that will join them. Will we see that here in Division 3? Well, we're about to find out at the end of 20 laps. Alex Hawkins, our winner from Phoenix. Chris Kyle, our winner twice at Open Roads in Talladega. will get us underway. Green flag is out here in the final division race at Armour. Another thing too, this track has not yet been officially confirmed as the season finale of the Snickers Cup Series. So if Chris Kyle, Sean Henley, these guys are planning on utilizing these races to be able to get themselves some experience when the season finale comes around, they may not be able to do that. This may not be the season finale track. It's not yet been confirmed where these drivers are going for the season finale. It's kind of odd too because our season finale last season in all three series took place at this very track. And now it's been moved so far towards the middle of the schedule and not even as a chase race. Whoa! One car got way down there close to the apron. That was uh, Charles Sanford in the 03. That almost gave me uh, a little bit of a start because it looked similar to what we saw in Division 1. Remember when Corey Williams and who the other driver was, but they got down right on the apron, then they shot back up the track. Tim Walsh might have been the other driver, and they collected a number of drivers that was up at the front of the field, as I recall, too. At the front, though, battle for the lead. Levi McIntyre. Now, McIntyre hasn't been to Victory Lane since the Daytona 500. And right now, he is not listed in the chase for the championship as far as if the chase were to start now. So a second win would be huge for him. He was a two-time winner last season as well. He won the second race of the season in Season 8 at Rockingham, UK. And then, when it really mattered the most, he took a second win just before the chase started, the regular season finale at, at uh, Arizona. So he knows how to win when it matters most. And right now, I'd say it really matters. His teammate Dorian Facepuncher is right there behind him to try and help push him to the front. Levi McIntyre was one of the final four who battled for the championship the last time these drivers were at Armory Digital Super Speedway. He was in the hunt for the championship in the season finale. He wants to be there again this season. Right now, he and Alex Hawkins working together, and it's working to their benefit. They 
been able to maintain a bit of a gap between themselves in a battle for third between Sean Henley and Dorian Facepuncher. Blaine Keyes also in that mix as well as Chris Bailey in the 92. Now Hawkins decides it's time to go. He's going to go to the inside line and try and take the top position back. Both these drivers actually winning earlier, uh, fairly early this season. Hawkins at Phoenix and of course Levi McIntyre at Daytona and the fact that those two have split from each other and are side by side, that's brought the rest of the field right to them. Here comes Chris Maley, Face Puncher, Keys, Henley, Chris Kyle, Charles Belding, right to their back door. Oh, look out, up into the wall goes Blaine Keys. Belding was into him as well. Did they save it though? No, they didn't. Oh, more cars involved. Silver Fox is spinning. Pemberton. David Rivera. Oh, more cars. Belding hits again. Got into Ryan Rezzo. Nick Smith just ran to the back of somebody. Yellow flag is out. Ryan Acosta's got damaged. Two-time winner Tristan Wilhoyt. Ryan Rezzo was stopped on the track. I think he had to teleport. Five wide here. Two of these cars are three. Of these cars are damaged. So are Fox, Guerrera, and uh, Pemberton. And now Jay Barker is going to try and cut his way through this traffic. I think Joshua Mudd could have possibly gotten a tiny piece of it. You can see a little bit of damage on the front of his Mudmobile. There's David Rivera and Stephanie Gardner, badly mangled machines. Nathan Hudson's dented up on the back of his Sailor Moon Mercedes. Cody Lamas, think he may have a little rear end damage. Angel Navarro, our winner from Dover, he's got damage. And there's some left side damage on the Blaine Keys machine. That was from uh, him getting up into the wall and then Charles Belding getting into him. That's what triggered the wreck. I don't know if, if the 41 had any contact when he shot up the track, but he did indeed slide right up into the wall and I think that's what triggered this wreck. Levi McIntyre is the leader, and I think maybe these drivers will get the benefit of pitting under caution rather than making green flag pit stops. Yes, indeed, they are all coming to pit lane. Levi McIntyre is certainly hoping that he doesn't end up having a uh, Lawler McIntyre sandwich on pit road here. I think this track has the right I and I for a pit road that it won't happen like what happened at Dragonette in the All Stars. But anyway, let's take a look at a replay of what put us under the caution here for the first time in the Division 3 race. All right, watch the 41 of Blaine Keys on the inside line. Oh, there was contact. He got run into the back of by Belding. They both go up into the wall, and then right there turns Belding down in front of Stephanie Gardner. Ryan Acosta is going to have nowhere to go. Same for Angel Navarro, and then they're just going to come down into traffic. Collard gets clipped. Cody Lamas there. There you see David Rivera runs into the back of him. Trent Dunham. Yeah, he got a piece of it. Got into Ryan Acosta. And the track just blocked up here. Jay Barker's in it. Sprigley's in it. There's where Pemberton gets involved. So too does Nathan Hudson. Sean Galligan, I think, might have squeezed his way through. Either that or he came to a dead stop. There's Silver Fox gets clipped. Alex Pedro was back behind this. Chris Dollerton. I don't know if they got involved or not. Henry Nova up on the high side with uh, Joshua Mudd. And then something happens further up here with the... Yeah, there's Nick Smith. He and Ryan Rezzo, I think, get together. Oh, no. Nope, nope. Right here. Right there. Nick Smith gets hit from behind by James Silverfox. Slides up into David Rivera, who kind of directs the 29... Towards the outside retaining wall. I don't think he hit it though. And then those cars that got around the high side. Tristan Wilhoyt, Henry Nova, and Joshua Mudd. They're not able to immediately dart down to the inside. After just avoiding the wreck on the high side. And I think this is where we're going to see their contact happen. Wilhoyt tried to get down there. Couldn't do it. Then Belding gets hit in the passenger side door again. And then here comes Joshua Mudd. He's Makes some contact right there. Yep. That's how he got damaged. And then the 911, something happens to Rezzo. Who does he hit? I'll bet he's going to nail Nick Smith as well. Right here? Yep. And that was a hard enough hit that that car had to actually teleport to pit road. He couldn't even drive it back to the pit lane. 
So, boy, we've had some really big wrecks take place early in both the Division 2 and now the Division 3 race. And, uh, the Division 3 big one starting with bump drafting in the corners, or at least a shove in the corner starting it. And they almost had it saved, but a lot of torn up race cars, though, here at the beginning of the Division 3 race. Let's head back now for the restart. Pace car has just hit the pit lane. We're getting ready to go back to green on lap 10 of 20. Levi McIntyre is the leader, according to the scoreboard. Chris Maley is second, Roy Vidarbu third. Hawkins is fourth, Connor Breeden fifth, then it's Henley, Buchanan, Face Puncher, Sanford, and Dylan Casella, the top 10 after the round of pit stops. Drivers that are out of the race, there are actually only a total of seven. They include Carson Gum, Stephanie Gardner, also uh, Joshua Collins out of the race, Ryan Acosta, Tristan Wilhoyt, Ryan Rezzo, and Nick Smith, all of them due to the incident that took place out of turn number two. So when we hit the stripe, it's 10 to go. We are now at the halfway point as the drivers hit the back straightaway. So we got some interesting scenarios up here at the front. Zach Cannon, who's been having a fairly decent season, is up here. Looking for his first win. Connor Breen looking for his second. So is Hawkins, so is McIntyre. Henley looking for his third. Dylan Casella looking for his first, along with James Qualls. They've both been very consistent this season. And there's Dunn LaPrad, who went to victory lane earlier on this season, and I believe it was Bristol. Breeden also, don't forget, went to victory lane a couple weeks ago in the uh, Open Roads race in the World One Cup Series. So he's got some momentum on his side. Henley got way up on the high line. Now he's starting to back. I don't know if he got forced up there or if he just uh, messed up the corner or something. But now, look at that outside line kick in. James Walls and Levi McIntyre. Two drivers who know each other very well. They were both two-time winners last season. And they both battling for the championship in the chase last season. It's now Qualls dives to the inside of Alex Hawkins. Now Qualls is running so well in the point stands. If he can go to the lane here tonight, we can't confirm it, but I think you can basically think that he would be one of the one-win drivers that would make it into the chase for the championship. So it's just that trip to victory lane that's plaguing him right now. Whoa, they are gonna go almost four wide here into this corner. Nope, now they sell it out to double wide. Look at TJ Dent. Where in the world did that 7 11 come from? That's another former winner this season who will love a second win and lock himself up in chase spot. Brother Ty Dent, running well in the point stands right now, would be second highest in points of the one time winners this season. So he's also in a good position to possibly make the chase as a one time winner here in season 9. Another Audi actually up here as well out of Kyotech Racing, Rohit Vidarbu right there in the destiny, number 68. He's now on the inside line. Going to look to go maybe three wide for the second position. How about also the Volkswagen Jetta of Steve Pollard the third? Got a lot of contenders up here. I think I also see a couple of retro race enterprise cars. I do. The Coke, uh, the Coke Vanilla number 03 of Charles Samper and also the Orange Reese Chevrolet of Justin Shelton just there in view. So a couple of names up here at the front, and I think I just saw, yeah, Dion Scott's now cracked into the top 15, I believe. He started this race from 41st, and now he's up here, gonna try and get himself to the lead. Whoa, contact there between Connor Breen and Roy Vidarbu. They almost wrecked it. They almost wrecked, but they hung on to it. Nice save. Breeden, as a result, going to lose a lot of spots, and Vedaro, who started slipping back as well. Now Breeden is going to build a four-wide situation as his momentum was definitely killed. Now here comes TJ Dent on the high line, trying to take the top position away from Alex Hawkins. You got in the top six, three drivers who've been to victory lane already this season, but once, and then three drivers who have yet to go to victory lane this season in face puncher, Qualls, and Pollard. Six to go here at Armory. I think the odds of another yellow flag coming out are pretty much null and void. So it's basically whatever you got, you gotta use it here in the final few laps. 
you look here, Levi McIntyre is the one that's the luckiest of these guys at the front because he has a teammate right behind him in Dorian Face, Dorian Face Puncher who can help try and push him towards the front. Whether or not Face Puncher will give the win to McIntyre or go for it himself though, is, yeah, that would remain to be seen. And at the current moment, it's all TJ Dent out in the front. Trying to go to victory for the second time this season, which would lock himself up a spot in this season's chase. And it would put an Audi in the uh, chase for the championship for the first time since season seven. Anthony McCurry was an Audi that battled for the uh, championship back in the seventh season. Season eight, Audi did not make an appearance in the battle for the championship. Now though, they gotta get more bunched up here if they're gonna try and reel in that 7-11 machine. James Qualls, Alex Hawkins, they've remained single file but haven't really been able to close up the ground. Steve Pollard down one underneath Levi McIntyre, that'd be for the fourth position. We've had Naudi go to victory lane twice this season. We've had Buick Regal go to victory lane with Carter Fargo. We've had Mercedes-Benz go to victory lane with Ryan Reza. Have not, however, had a Volkswagen Jetta go to victory lane. And Pollard is up here with a chance to do that. But here comes Charles Samper helping Alex Hawkins on the inside line. But, you know, that battle back there is really good with Hawkins, Qualls, Samper, and Pollard. But the big problem is that's about three, four car lengths behind the leader. That's not for the lead. That's for second place. So these guys, they have to do something to try and reel in TJ Dent. Now they're going to go three wide. Wow, it's a close three wide. Oh, wait, pit stops. TJ Dent coming to pit road. Now this surprised me. I did not think they were going to have to come to pit road again. I think Trent Dunham just made a pit stop. He's just now leaving pit road, so he pitted one lap earlier than everyone. TJ Dent on the pit lane along with Connor Breen, Rohit Vidarabu, Dan Laprad, Jay Barker there, Zach Buchanan, Chris Maley, Richard Johnson, Hudson, Dollarton, Mudd, and Deion Scott. Oh, caution! Caution is out! Oh. Henley, I think, made a pit stop before these guys did too, and so did Trent Dunham. They may have pitted a lap earlier, but the caution is out here with three to go. Now is the big question. Can these guys save fuel under yellow? Or are they going to have to come to pit road? If they do come to pit road, who was the leader off the pit lane on the last lap? It was Breton. Breton was the fastest off of pit road. So if all these other drivers have to come to pit lane, Breton would cycle around as the leader. And here come some indications for pit road. Hawkins is going to come. Walls as well as Steve Pollard. Sanford's going to try and stretch it. McIntyre's in, face punchers in, Casella, Shelton will stay out as well with Pedro, Henry Nova, Chris Kyle, and James Silverfox. Strigley's in, Blaine Keys, Pemberton, along with Cody Lamas and Angel Navarro. And then these are the drivers from Breton on back who came to pit road on the lap the Kosh came out on. So now it would appear that Charles Sanfer is going to try and stretch it on fuel. This is a little ironic too, because when you think of fuel strategy in Sanfer, your memory's got to go back to Dover, when he was two laps short on fuel, when he dominated the second half of that race and lost the win to Angel Navarro, who was able to make it on fuel. So the question here is, with two to go, can Charles Sanfer or any of these other drivers behind him that decided to stay out, can they milk it around? Can they shut the cars off? Can they conserve enough fuel to make it to the end. It's going to come down to who has enough Sunoco to get them to the finish, and this is a pretty big track to try and conserve that under yellow as well. We'll come back here and see if these drivers have enough fuel to get to the end, but we'll take a look here at a replay of what put us under the caution, which is more than likely going to finish this race under the yellow flag. Well, as a number of drivers were indicating they were going to come to pit road, you see some contact right there between Alex Pedro and Richard Johnson. And Johnson just kind of stopped in front of Silver Fox, and Chris Kyle gets a huge momentum run on the high side. I don't think Silver Fox realized he was there, and he didn't give Chris Kyle very much room. Chris Kyle gets him in the right rear, turns him up into the wall, and James Silver Fox is going to go for a spin down the front straightaway here. 
And that was enough for uh, NSRA to decide to throw a yellow flag. And that that's what brought out the caution flag right there. I mean, Silver Fox, I don't think, to his credit, I don't think he knew Chris Kyle was, able, was coming to his high side. And Richard Johnson killed Silver Fox's momentum, so Chris Kyle, I don't think, knew that Silver Fox was not completely up to speed. So I think that was just some miscommunication there, but as a result, Silver Fox went for a spin, and that puts us under the caution. So now we got to go back. White flag has just been displayed for Charles Sanford. Let's see if he's got enough fuel to get him to the end. Sanford just crossed the stripe. They're heading into turn number one. I'm surprised to actually see these drivers running up there on the high line. I'm surprised none of them aren't running down on the apron, which would be a flatter portion of the racetrack. But I don't, I don't know. It, it, maybe they have enough to make it the rest of the way. If you think about it, we didn't really see Sanford, Casella, Jessica Shelton really pushing it up at the front of the field. They were running basically just outside the top 10 or just inside the top 10. They weren't up inside the top five to eight. So they may have been conserving, although I don't really know how you can run up with the front pack and conserve at the same time, but maybe they found a way to do it. Whatever the case though, Samper is the leader, Casella in second, Shelton third, fourth Pedro, fifth is Henry Nova. Then you got Chris Kyle, who had that contact with James Silver Fox. He's still in sixth, and Silver Fox, who spun to bring out the caution, is still running. He's in seventh. He didn't pit. Charles Belding, who was involved in that big wreck when he made contact with Blaine Keyes, he's up there in eighth now. Jerry Guerra, no hood at all, started this race dead last. He's ninth. And that other damaged car of David Rivera is in tenth. Now, this is the driver, and if these drivers cannot make it on the fuel, he would cycle around as the winner, I would believe, because he got off pit road first when they came to pit road on the lap that the yellow flag came out, Connor Breton. But that is turn four, and Sanford is not indicating pit road. That car still maintaining 70 mile per hour pace speed. So Charles Sanford called this sweet redemption for the 03 from Dover. As here tonight at Armory, he will have enough fuel to get to the end. Just a couple of races since debuting for Retro Racing Enterprises. He will pick up Retro Racing Enterprises' first win of the season, winning here tonight in Division 3 at Armory Digital Super Speedway. And ironically enough, the last time that Charles Sanford went to Victory Lane, folks, was Season 7 Daytona 5. It has been that long since he's been to Victory Lane, and he's now out of fuel. He runs out of fuel just in the middle of turns one and two. Shelton, his teammate, the same thing. you got to think both of them were on the exact same strategy because they both ran out of fuel at the same time. Casella, Pedro, and Nova, though, they're still, I think they're still up to speed. Chris Kyle is out of fuel as well now. What a job there for Charles Sanford. And a good night for Retro Racing Enterprises, first and third on fuel conservation. But Charles Sanford, what a win for him there. He drove the 55 Aaron's Dream Machine in Season 7, won the 500, never went to Victory Lane after that, drove all of Season 8 in the Mitsubishi Lancer for Gonzalez S3 Motorsports, no victories. He drove half this season also in the Mitsubishi Lancer, almost won at Dover but was not able to. And now, moving over to the Chevrolet team of Retro Racing Enterprises, he'll pick up his first win of Season 9. And his first win since the beginning of Season 7. What a great win for him. So we've had three first-time winners here tonight for Season 9. Chris Washer goes to Victory Lane, the BMW, in Division 1. Division 2 goes to Dougie Shears in the 46 out of Schwab Racing, his first win of the season. And Charles Sanford goes to victory lane for the first time this season in the number 03 Chevrolet. So, as far as what the chase would look like if it were to end tonight and begin next week, I don't know for certain. As usual, we know Danny Wells, Will Hoy, Piet, Chris Kyle, and Sean Henley are locked in. But as far as the other one-time winners where they would be situated if the chase were to start now, I don't know. But I'm going to find out the same time that you guys do. 
have Dougie Shears, Chris Kyle, or Charles Sanford thrown their names into the ring as a potential driver for a spot in this season's chase. I don't know that either, but we're going to find out as here comes your official full finish results here from the Division 3 race, and then your overall points gains, and then also the looking ahead chase points as they would stand after tonight's three division races. Hope you guys enjoyed these races from Armory. If you did, be sure to give us a video like, subscribe, and subscribe to the crew today. Jessica Shelton is uh, going in reverse on the racetrack. Okay, and now it's Spear. And now Stanford's going backwards. And so is Casella. Okay. Everybody's driving backwards now. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time here if you've been watching Special Answer 8. Offline racing at its best. Good night from Armory, everybody.